Hi everybody and welcome to another super spooky book chat. My name is Leslie and I'm the reading machine coordinator for Monterey County Free Libraries. And this week I'm going to be diving into the third story in Stephen King's uh, book of novels called Four Past Midnight. The third novella in this story that I'm going to be talking about tonight is called The Library Policeman. It is my favorite of the three. Um, it is 204 pages long. And I just want to give a warning up front. It does deal with some themes that are disturbing. Um, alcoholism, child sexual abuse. So be warned if you read this story that those themes are present. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and dive in. Um, the Library Policeman is about a man named Sam Peebles, who is called upon to give a speech for the local Rotary Club. Um, his speech is a little dry, so he heads over to the local library to get some help with it because, you know, librarians are magic and can help you with all kinds of things. Um, so he wanders in and he finds himself in the children's room. And the passage I'm going to read you is from his visit to that area of the library. Um, so it's just describing what he sees there in the children's room. Sam's clearest sense was one of almost wistful pleasure. On one wall was a photograph of a puppy with large thoughtful eyes. Written beneath the puppy's anxious, hopeful face was one of the world's great truths. It is hard to be good. On the ever other wall was a drawing of mallards making their way down a riverbank to the reedy verge of the water. Make way for ducklings, the poster trumpeted. Sam looked to his left, and the faint smile on his lips first faltered and then died. Here was a poster which showed a large, dark car speeding away from what he supposed was a school building. A little boy was looking out of the passenger window. His hands were plastered against the glass, and his mouth was open in a scream. In the, back, the background, a man, only a vague, ominous shape, was hunched over the wheel, driving hell for leather. The words beneath this picture read, Never take rides from strangers. Sam recognized that this poster and the little red riding hood picture on the door of the children's library both appealed to the same primitive emotions of dread, but he found this one much more disturbing. Of course, children should accept should not accept rides from strangers, and of course they had to be taught not to do so. But how was this the right was how was this the right way to make the point? How many kids he wondered have had a week's worth of nightmares thanks to that little public service announcement? And there was another one posted right on the front of the checkout desk that struck a chill as deep as January down Sam's back. It showed a dismayed boy and girl, surely no older than eight cringing back from a man in a trench coat and gray hat. The man looked at least 11 feet tall. His shadow fell on the upturned faces of the children. The brim of his 1940s style fedora threw its own shadow, and the eyes of the man in the trench coat gleamed relentlessly from its black depths. They looked like chips of ice as they studied the children, marking them with a grim gaze of authority. He was holding out an ID folder with a star pinned to it, an odd sort of star with at least nine points on it, maybe as many as a dozen. The message beneath read, Avoid the library police. Good boys and girls return their books on time. That taste was in his mouth again, that sweet, unpleasant taste. And a queer, frightening thought occurred to him. I have seen this man before. But that was ridiculous, of course, wasn't it? Sam thought of how such a poster would have intimidated him as a child, of how much simple, unalloyed pleasure it would have stolen from the safe haven of the library and felt in indignation rise in his chest. He took a step forward to the, he took a t step toward the poster to examine the odd star more closely, taking his roll of tums out of his pocket at the same time. He was putting one of them into his mouth when a voice spoke up from behind him. Well, hello there. He jumped and turned around, ready to, to do battle with a library dragon, now that it had finally disclosed itself. So, the end of that passage is when Sam is greeted by the elderly librarian, who is named Ardelia Lortz. And she seems nice enough, but in Stephen King's world, nothing is ever what it seems. Um, there is so much more to Ardelia than I could ever put in a video that has time constraints such as this one. Uh, so I'm going to urge you to read the book to find out more about Ardelia and to find out more about the library policeman because 
the library policeman is actually a big character in this story. It's just in that passage I read you, he's only a figure on a poster. So uh, it, this is a really good story. Like I said, some disturbing themes. Um, so beware of that. If you uh, tend to be triggered by those things, um, please tread softly. Please tread carefully. Otherwise, um, this is a re really great story by Stephen King, the third novella in Four Past Midnight, titled The Library Policeman. And next week, I will be finishing up this series of super spooky Halloween book chat videos with the last novella in this book, which is called The Sun Dog. So really looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great week and stay safe. All right. Bye.